actually going to invite on Leon Anavi first. Leon, are you out there? Um, who's going to talk about open source tools for making open source hardware? Because why are we using proprietary software for making open source hardware? Thanks for jumping on early. Hi, Nadia. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so um, today, in the next 20 minutes, I'll be talking about open source tools for making open source hardware. My name is Leon Davi. Uh, I'm based in Bulgaria, in Bobby, Bulgaria, and I'm a software engineer. Yeah, you heard it right. My uh, full-time job is a software engineer, although I've graduated from technical university. However, I have been interested in open source uh, hardware, and I have been involved with open source hardware uh, for the past 10 years. Uh, the past five to six years, I have been actually making open source hardware on my own. Uh, so let's talk about the um, the benefits of open source hardware. We all know what open source hardware is. After all, uh, this is the open source hardware summit. But uh, let's focus on the benefits. Open source hardware is good for giving confidence that the design will be available if the original manufacturer stops pr production or stops selling it in certain regions. Uh, this could be caused by the worldwide situation or just uh, by, the, by a poor business model and uh, that can, may cause uh, the original manufacturer to go out of business. Uh, with open source hardware, the customers have this insurance that the design is there and they can manufacture it or someone else can manufacture it. Further, furthermore, with open source hardware, the bill of materials is public. So um, if a manufacturer designs to make something that costs 10 or 20 times more uh, than the prices of the bill of materials, then anyone uh, can say, hey, I can do this. I can manufacture this on my own and I'll save some money. Furthermore, with open source hardware, we can repair and maintain the hardware that we buy. Uh, open source hardware also enables customization and integration of third party products. Let's say that you have a very complex uh, product with multiple ingredients. So you can rely on certain parts for this product uh, on established trusted uh, existing open source hardware devices and you can integrate them uh, in, their, in your product, of course. Uh, depending on the open source hardware license of these uh, modules. So open source hardware is about sharing knowledge, educating students and getting feedback and uh, contributions from the community. Uh, later on, we'll discuss this in more details. Um, so obviously open source hardware is pretty cool. And uh, the open source hardware movement is having a momentum for the last uh, several years. So many uh, companies and individuals are saying, hey, we make open source hardware, but is it really open source? And here comes the role of the Open Source Hardware Association, which not only makes this awesome summit, but they run a free certification program which lists uh, products that comply with the understanding for really open source um, hardware devices. So next time when you're buying open source hardware, double check if this device is actually listed uh, and certified by the Open Source Hardware Association. And if not, ask the, uh, the manufacturer and the creator of the project to certify it because it's free and pretty cool. So there are several important questions that I would like to focus on in this talk. Does it make sense to use proprietary software for open source hardware? Is it worth designing open source hardware with expensive proprietary software tools? And this question is a little bit tricky. Uh, if you are starting a new product from scratch, obviously the answer is no, use open source. However, it, there are situations where you have an open source hardware product started uh, 10 or 20 years ago uh, with some proprietary tools, and it might be very difficult to switch from them to uh, new tools. Can you build a sustainable community if your contributors have to pay gazillions for software licenses just to modify, study, and contribute back to your open source hardware uh, project? And the answer is uh, easy. No, no, definitely not. If you want a community, people should be able uh, to edit the projects. And in order to edit them, they need the software with which these projects have been designed. Uh, so uh, definitely 
uh, consider using open source software tools for making open source hardware. And um, let's have a look what is um, open source hardware product. It's obviously not just a single thing. There are several ingredients. The hardware is the most important ingredient, but we also need software for software firmware for this hardware, and we need documentation. And this means that we need a bunch of tools to create all these materials, to put them together in a product that can go to a market and other people can buy or make on their own. Let's start with the free and open source design automation tools. Number one on my list here is KiCad or KiCad. Uh, this is a very complex software capable of designing really sophisticated boards, but it's not the only one. We also had uh, Jetta. We also have Fritzing for very simple schematics, which is uh, mm, useful for, uh, especially for educational purposes. There are a lot of other open source tools that get an honorable mention, but they're either not very well maintained or not very popular. So I won't discuss them in details. Let's focus on uh, KiCad. This is a free and open source EDA software available as a GPL version 3 plus license and it's cross-platform, which means it runs on GNU Linux distributions, on Microsoft Windows and on Mac OS. As an open source enthusiast, I'm running it uh, on my laptop, which I'm using for this stream as well. And it's with Ubuntu Linux. KiCad has an integrated 3D viewer. So once you design the board, you can have a quick look at how it would uh, look like a 3D viewer. You can design really complex boards. Uh, the boards that I design are just uh, very simple boards, two layer boards, with, but with uh, KiCad, we can do boards that are up to 32 copper layers. And this is not just a hobby project. KiCad has something very serious. It has a long story. And for the last five to six years or even more, it has a lot of contributions from CERN. So there are developers that are maintaining it and they're getting paid to be developing KiCad. Uh, KiCad has been already adopted by the industry. So we can have some uh, have a look at some interesting made with KiCad projects. And um, I have selected several really complex projects which are actually open source. We have two laptops here, this one, is MTT Reform. Uh, it was uh, crowdfunded through Crowd Supply. Uh, it's made in Germany. This one here is something that actually I have. It's in the other room. And it's made by my neighbors, Olimex. Uh, it uses uh, the A64 board, just like this board, which we'll have a closer look at. And also another really interesting project made with KiCad is a CubeSat. So as you can see, uh, KiCad is something that's free. It's open source. It runs on Linux, it runs on Windows, it runs on Mac OS, and you can design really complex hardware. And speaking about complex hardware, let's have a closer look at Olimax A64 Olimax Uno board. This is how I've loaded it in KiCad. It has six layers. Here you can have a look at the six layers and have a look at this density of the traces. This is just only the first layer and still, a very, very complex hardware designed with KiCad. So next time someone says you uh, that there are not um, sufficient open source um, tools for designing printed circuit board, think twice because here is KiCad and it's totally amazing. And you can do really, really complex printed circuit boards. And what about the cases? <laughs> for me, the cases are the most difficult part, but we have so many open source tools for designing mechanical parts or 3D models, such as OpenSCAD, which I like because it's kind of a programming and making 3D object, QCAD, FreeCAD, LibreCAD, SoulSpace, Blender. Blender is not exactly something that has been originally designed for this, but basically it's for making 3D animations and 3D models. So someone who has skills with Blender, which is a fantastic program, very complicated, but still a fantastic program, can adopt models design in Blender and, for example, 3D print them. And uh, documentation. Doc the documentation is something that's often underestimated, but in order to have a successful product, you need documentation. And we can split it into two. Documentation for... Um, instructions how to reproduce the hardware. Let's say I have designed this, this board, and if someone else wants to manufacture this board, here are the steps how to do it. And the other is, if you buy this board or make this board, how to use it, how to use the software for it, and so on. And there are so many open source tools um, which have been widely used for documenting open source software, which you can adapt and use for open source hardware. Here is a short list of them, markdown files, 
LaTeX, even HTML5. Uh, you can do an HTML page with the documentation. We have MediaWiki. This is the wiki, uh, basically the engine for Wikipedia. DocuWiki, WikiFactory, read the docs. Uh, great tool is Pandoc, which allows you to from Markdown and other uh, uh, specific languages for uh, describing documentation to convert it to other like uh, if you want to from Markdown to go uh, to go to a PDF, Pandoc is there. And there is even a specification produced in Germany at this spec defining the standards for documentation of open source hardware. This is something that I uh, recently heard about, but yeah, it exists and. Um, um, people in Germany are thinking about standard ways how to do documentation. Now, this is the most important part, version control. I have seen so many amazing hardware engineers which are not familiar with the concept about version control, which is a de facto standard in the software world. So you need a good versioning to make a, a very good difference between versions of the hardware. And uh, we have so many free and open source systems to do it starting with, with Git, which is the most popular, and I highly recommend you to go for Git. Mercurial, which is another decentralized, uh, just like Git, a system for version control. Subversion, it's uh, getting a bit old, but it's a centralized uh, system for version control. Furthermore, we have so many popular services which are providing version control system as a service. GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, SourceForge, and not only Git, are, uh, some of them are providing services for other open source uh, version control systems as well. Um, and if you, uh, there are free for, for open source projects and some of them have additional features for bug tracking or documentation, which might be useful for certain projects. Um, my, this is my first project. It, uh, it was an add-on board for Raspberry Pi. After that, I did a lot, but this started in 2017. And um, KiCad has a, a steep learning curve. Git also has a steep learning curve. But I'm a developer, so I was familiar with Git. And uh, KiCad was something new. I'm fortunate to have very good neighbors from Olimex here, because they're also having an office in my hometown in Plovdiv, Bulgaria. So they've uh, switched from Eagle to KiCad, and they were kind enough to, for the local community to make workshops to show us how it works. That's how I started with KiCad, and with help with friends, I made my first board. And once, um, once I had it done, it was easy to make new boards. And here are some of the boards that I have created uh, in the years after that. So uh, just as a recommendation, don't be afraid, give it a try. And um, learning new things is always hard at the beginning, but once you get used to them, things are getting easier and easier. So speaking about open source, community matters. Uh, community um, is... Um, something vital for any product. Keeping the hardware, the software, and the documentation in public repositories allows people to contribute back. And it's mandatory if you're making an open source project. Uh, using popular tools and services such as Git and uh, GitHub or GitLab makes it easier to attract more contributors because people are already registered in these uh, uh, platforms and they know how to contribute back, for example, how to make a GitHub pull request. Excellent documentation is always an advantage because this means that people from the community can understand better what you're doing. And bloggers have the power to spread the word among the community and influence it. So if you're making a new product, uh, contact bloggers, that it can help you um, to reach more people. And people enjoy step-by-step -step tutorials in YouTube, Instructables, Hackers, uh, Hackster, Hackday.io, just because this helps to, uh, to get started easily. So how to build a community? I'm not an expert in this. I'm just sharing some tips and tricks. Uh, the first one is to use de facto industry standard version control system like Git. If you're using SVN, it's very hard to contribute back. So Git is something that I highly recommend you. Services like GitHub, GitLab, uh, submit often. So when you, when you develop open source, you should often submit the changes that you make to your uh, project. Uh, and this helps other people to contribute back, to provide feed feedback. Be respectful and thankful for each contribution uh, because the contribution it, most of the time is coming from someone who's interested in your project, likes it, and want to share uh, his experience, his ideas. Um, 
Beware that hardware is hard. Unlike software, this is a major difference. It's really hard because hardware prototyping and low volume manufacturing is expensive. Sourcing components, especially nowadays because of the global chip shortage, is very hard. Um, often you can't um, really uh, easily build uh, hardware at home. It's not like software. You download the software, you compile it, and you're ready. With hardware, it's not like this. You need specific tools, you need soldering skills. It takes more time. Debugging requires specific uh, physical tools as well. Um, and if, if there is a bug, you need to, to manufacture again the hardware. Uh, often the, the testing of the hardware could be even dangerous. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is a major difference between software and hardware, and we have to adapt the tools that we're using for software in order to use them for hardware and the workflows, but still it's possible to do it. So here are some examples of things that I have done, and I have um, received suggestions from the community, and here are Git commits because I'm putting the whole KiCad project in GitHub in a public repository, people are providing feedback and best based on this feedback, I am making improvements. And here is a Git trailer with a description of what has been done and who has suggested it. So we had, a, a, it's rare that you get um, a GitHub pull request directly for modifying the, the KiCad project, but it's quite often that people come with ideas and say, hey, change this and that. And it's very important to give them credit because they're part of the community. Um, credit for this suggestion. And um, Git trailers are really useful. And this is something that's uh, um, commonly used in the Linux kernel development, but we can here, as you can see, we can adapt it and use this uh, workflow for making hardware as well. And uh, hardware modifications, uh, yeah, it's from time to time people fork uh, open source uh, hardware and make their own projects. Here are a couple of examples. I made an infrared uh, auto board in 2017, which I've showed you. A friend needed a relay on it, so he made his own uh, modification. And here is uh, a modification coming from France. Uh, I had a light controller for controlling uh, 12 volt RGB LEDs. Um, and uh, this person uh, had some ideas. He, he liked KiCad, so he, he made his own for the project and uh, shared it in GitHub as well. So speaking about role to market, because open source hardware is not just about a community. Yeah, community always matters. It's the major thing, but it's also important to have a viable business model because as I said, making hardware is expensive and you have to cover the costs. Um, so uh, uh, recently uh, I've involved, I, I was involved in an open next project, which is a European project. And the Danish design center is working on an open source business model toolkit, especially for hardware. You can visit their website. And as far as I know, soon publicly they will share, be sharing more uh, news about it. There are so many, nowadays, there are so many open source hardware friendly marketplaces and crowdfunding platforms like Tindy, uh, Electrons. Electrons is something new, it's based in Europe and it handles all the complications that we have here in Europe with uh, value added taxes and so on. And my personal favorite, CrowdSupply, which is a crowdfunding platform focused on open source hardware. Actually, um, Tindy and CrowdSupply are uh, part of the sponsors of the Open Source Hardware Summit. So let's wrap it up with some conclusions. Um, first of all, um, open source hardware is something really important. We should encourage more and more people to use it. Uh, the Open Source Hardware Certification Program by the Open Source Hardware Association uh, helps people and customers easier, easily identify which is really open source uh, project, open source hardware project. Uh, now there are uh, high quality free and open source software tools for designing open source hardware, such as KiCad. You can also adapt things like um, the Git uh, and all the tools for the documentation for a hardware project. Uh, established open source um, software development workflows can be adapted for hardware. Um, projects and products. Obviously, you cannot take them directly, but with just a, a little bit of tweaking, you can adapt and use it. Um, open source hardware is a viable business model already used by a lot of well-known companies in the industry. And now it's supported by several platforms where individuals or small companies can start making and selling uh, things. And last but not least, actually the most important, that if we're speaking about open source, community always matters. And here are some useful links. I think we have some time for questions, like a couple of minutes.
Yay, thank you so much, Leon. This was such a great resource for everyone. Lots of people on the discourse are clamoring to hope that you share your slides so they can click on everything and check out everything that um, you mentioned. Obviously, talking about your tool chain is one of everyone's favorite things to discuss on the internet, along with KiCad versus KiCad. <laughs> um, but maybe like a question that you could start off with is, given that a lot of open source hardware is about collaboration and community, like you said, um, which of these tools really support that, the collaborative aspect of it, especially for times when you're collaborating with people you've never met before online? Um, like what kind of version control works well with that? What are your experiences? Can you share more? That's easy. For me, it's Git. <laughs> it's Git. And um, services like uh, GitHub or GitLab. Uh, so this is not an easy question because Git has a steep learning curve. So if you are new to Git, it will take some time to, to get used to it. It has, um, it, it, it looks very complicated at the beginning, but you need to put some time for it. And this is gonna pay off in the long term because Git is a de facto standard. It's very flexible. The decentralized nature of Git allows people from all around the world to contribute, no matter what kind of time zone uh, are they in. That's a, I feel like that's a great way to collaborate on lots of different types of things. But maybe you can also elaborate a bit more on a bunch of people in the chat have been talking about mechanical design alongside electronics and firmware. Um, and sometimes Git is not the best at dealing with huge binary blobs, um, which end up being a lot of mechanical design um, files. So I don't know that there is an answer to this, but any insight that you have into that would be awesome. Um, well, binary blobs are always, always a problem, but um, like sharing the source code is not exactly a binary blob. Uh, so I recommend you to use tools which are more text oriented. This way you don't have the binary blobs, if possible, of course, it's not always possible. But ideally, uh, my personal favorite is OpenSCAD, and I know it's more for educational purposes. And it's my personal favorite just because I'm really bad at mechanical engineering. <laughs> I'm a software engineer, I like to code. And with OpenSCAD, you just code and the 3D object is visualized. So if we have more tools like this or uh, options to export to more um, text-friendly files where we can compare, this would be perfect for using Git. Oh, that's awesome. Well, there's tons of people who are chatting in the Discord. Um, we're getting ready for a break. I really thank you, Leon, for being um, available to switch um, around with Vipov, who is going to be speaking after the break.